Well, hello everyone. It's Nancy today. I'm down here at the grass teepee and I've been putting grass layers of it on. And Willem is unloading the car for me. It's full of more grass. And my campfire has worked. I did an upside down fire this time. So I put the biggest wood at the bottom and smaller wood as I came up. And then I put the smallest wood on the very top. But it didn't seem to work putting the birch bark above that. So I put some birch bark down underneath everything. And eventually it did work. But then I added a whole bunch of dry bark from the house. Which is what's burning right now. Here he comes. Now if you could bring that around further, past the arch, please and thank you. See, I put sticks now coming out of the side of the teepee where it needs work. So just, yeah, yeah just somewhere there, but not exactly under where all the sticks are sticking out. Because right. I'll have to put the ladder in that spot. Or, Thank you, Willem. You can probably go the other way now. It's quicker. See, so this is all dark. The only places where there's light coming through is where the sticks are sticking out. So on the joint by that post, I don't know which one that one is. And then on the joint of this post up the edge, I've made a little getaway and an arch. Here comes my Willem. And then now he's put all this here, which I can put on where the sticks are sticking out there. They're on both sides. I wonder how far down they are. It's just one up there. I thought there was problems in here too. Here it is. This is it. Right there. Okay. So I'll just layer this on. I put it on down at the bottom and then I put it higher and higher. This is all dark, I guess. It's only over there. That's interesting because I didn't know where... It... Yeah, that's right. This doesn't have much on it at all. There's a branch in the way keeping things from being able to go on it. So, isn't that a lovely pile? Look at how these trees have grown up so nicely. They're such beautiful trees. And look at how, look at how wonderful it looks. Doesn't it look very organic? You know, just very part of the earth. I have all the things I might want to do while I'm here. I had fire making stuff, including birch bark. And my violin, my journal. I have this base that I'm going to use that willow to make a basket out of. You're so awesome, Willem. Thank you. And this this chair, the stitching, this has all come apart. But this is in really good shape. So I was thinking, I have this cedar bark here. I thought I would use cedar bark, but it might not it might not be strong enough. Maybe I should use something else. Maybe I should make rope out of, not grass, that's pretty brittle. Maybe out of cattails. Maybe I could use a cattails, twist them very tightly. This is the sunsets over there. So this is the sunset chair. You see? Isn't it lovely? You see? One day it will be a, a, a tree. It will be a willow. And I will be able to remove the chair under it. Of course, it will probably be a few years before that happens. Here he comes. More willow. Any more, more grass. Uh, yeah, I guess so. This is really working well, Willem. I'm grateful for all that you're bringing here. I 
I should probably go up there while he's still here. See, these are nettles. And these are cattails. See how much grass I've had to cut? All this was very tall and you couldn't get around in here. Yeah, there's a lot of leaking air there. A little leaking light. Yeah, I think I should have it over here, Willem. I, should, I think I may need it over here. Yeah, I'll have to layer it from there. Going up. Yeah, I'll need it here, I believe. Okay, just over the other pile? Just on top of the other pile, yes. The same orientation. And how much is here? Yeah, this is good. Okay. So I've got it really thick there. That last layer, you know, it's all downhill, so you can tell which is part of the... This is pretty impressive. There's a lot of bees on it. All right, I'll show you what else there is to see down here. So I'm making a path behind here, and it twists out there and it comes out at the stream. But I can't show you that right now. So I think I'm going to continue to cut around these trees. And then I'll leave, I'll leave a bit over there. Maybe I'll, this will be a pathway here. That that one needs work. I have to redo that whole teepee, or whole thing. Or maybe I'll just scrap it and make a new one. And then I have these, oh, the flowers. You see what we, isn't that beautiful? I planted lots of flower seeds along here. It's not the ones I planted that came up. Some of them have, like there's chicory, and what are they called? And then, of course, there. Oh, look what this one. This is mm. this is a lily. Yeah, the I bumblebees mean, are so busy on those flowers. Aren't they wonderful? And there's yeah. another chicory, an echinacea, and uh, heliopsis. That's what that is. That's not really. Is that all that's left? Is that all that's left? Yeah, this is the last one. Is all right, well, they can just go in this one. do it off the, off the ground and the okay. buttons are on both sides. So. That's okay. Just put it on this one then. Thank you. So I have this little willow, living willow sculpture here. So this is going around like that and then it goes around back there. There and then you can sit and sort of be in a little bit of shade. It needs to be brought down. Thank you so much. I love you. Love you too. Thank you. So, oh, I was going to ask you to help me. Um, there's another ladder in the inside. Could you bring it out, please? Okay. It's a yeah, shorter inside. ladder mm -hmm. in the teepee, yeah. See, here's the grass, uh, or the cattail mattress. This is the little chair pair. Looks like the table is a little uneven, and I have my little broom here to tidy things up. And these I have pushed into the ground here to create this extra front okay, you, you and um, put it right right here me no uh, um, yeah let's go around this way yeah we could just put it right in here if you go around from that side 
standing right there against the teepee. Oh, which way? Which way? This way, I guess. Yeah. Sort of. Can you move it up a bit? But be careful of your back. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Okay, now you're on your way. Thank you so okay. much for your help. Bye. Bye. Now these are nettles here. I've already harvested the big ones and the little ones are coming back from it. So all those leaves make great tea. So perhaps when the when there's enough water or when there's enough fire and then I'll boil some water and make tea. I don't usually boil the water here. I usually just eat it, drink it, but the beavers are in it and I don't think that's trustworthy. I'll turn these so that the white part faces in to the fire. And this face is in there too. Okay, did I show you everything? I didn't show you inside. See, there's that one that has to come out. But I have my other pathways through here. My shoes are not very high and I don't want to walk through there right now because I'll probably get wet feet. Anyway, so, a friend stopped this morning to say hello. That was nice. Okay, I better go so I can have enough whatever to upload this when I have to upload it. Okay. Oh, and I also have a light for inside now that it's dark inside. Yep, that's it. What else have I got in there? Some clippers. And, and I, I think I'll work on this basket maybe in a while. Maybe I will, I'll climb up the first ladder and I'll lay down all the straw on the places where the alder is showing through. And then I'll go inside and check. And then I'll, I'll do the other side with the other ladder and go inside and check. Maybe I'll just wait and do both and then go inside and check. It's a bit squishy to get in there, you know. And then, and then I will, um, then I will try moving one of the ladders, the short ladder, to the next place and see if that gives me enough access. And then when Willem comes back in an hour or so, he can move the ladder, the big ladder for me. And I'm going to work, and when I get tired, I sit down and I write in my journal, play the violin, and work on my basket. Anyway, I'm glad you were able to come. I love this teepee. It's just the cutest thing, isn't it? My little kitchen sticking out of it. Okay, well, I'll talk to you later. You know what? I want, I, you know, you're 65 and you're retired. You can do whatever you want. So if you want to build a grass hut, do it. Just do it. Do it. Don't worry about what does it take to do it. Just find some grass. Find some clippers. Get a big enough you know, back seat of your car to carry them. Put plastic down if you want. You know, start with a little teepee structure and then maybe put something, willows. There's lots of willows growing in waterways. You might not live where there is waterways. This is, this is pretty wet lowland. It's a wetland in here. I'm looking forward to cutting right around those trees. I think that's going to look very nice. I'm going to leave some of the grass for divide, dividing. Like, see right along here? There's this grass right here. Well, this is only a foot thick right along there. You can see through it there. But I, I want to leave it there because I, I, want to, I don't want to be right open to the road. I don't mind if they see in over the grass a little bit, but I don't want it to be like I'm just sitting out here in a field. I like the walls, the coziness of the tall grass walls. I don't know, that grass is only about three feet tall, I think. 
Some of it's five feet tall. See some of those tall parts? And I've been working on it back in here. You probably can't see that. And I cut it along the stream so we can access the front of the stream. And there's this big pile of wood under there, which is, I'm bringing it out and, and using it over here in the campfire. Or I'm standing them straight up into one of those wire things that goes around a tree. The tree has died, so I'm putting all the really tall straight poles in that wire thing. No reason, just because I feel like it. Okay, well that's it. I'll try and upload this soon. Today is September 25th, 2022. I'm 67 years old. Willem is 73. And this is Sedge Meadow Teepee, or the Grass Hut Settlement. It was always Sedge Meadow Teepee. So if you want to see this in its different forms, Google Sedge Meadow Teepee Nancy today. And I used to call it T-I-P-I, -I, but then I started changing them to T-E-E-P-E-E -E 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 and T-E-P-E-E. -E -E. So you got to try all three spellings. And this is Sedge, S-E-D-G-E, -E, Sedge Meadow Teepee. And then it became the Grass Hut Settlement, but I have no way to video it, so there's very few videos of that except bringing my camera down here, but see, uploading is not what it used to be. It used to be I could go home and I could upload 10 videos a day on the internet from my house. And now I can't. Now if I can get one up, that's a big, huge, amazing thing. It takes hours. It must be because people use so many forms of internet now. They've got their Google devices and their phones and their, their smart houses. There's so much stuff that's on the internet now. Plus, everybody's on a laptop, so there's, there's that. And then there's televisions. All the televisions are on the internet now. That's a huge load. So I used to be able to upload a 10-minute video in half an hour or something. Now it'll take me five hours, maybe all night. Anyway, so we'll see. Maybe I'll just go and drive in my car and upload it using my data. I used up half the data the other day trying to upload a video. Ha, but Willem has lots of data that is unused. He never uses his data, so I could maybe borrow his phone and go to the village and upload it. Wouldn't that be cool if I could upload it today? Well, let's see how it goes. Okay, so I'll talk to you soon. And remember, you can do this at home. And if you can dream it, you can do it. Really. Really and truly, is that not evidence? If you can dream it, you can do it. And if you want, if you have time, you can do this. Don't give in to your body saying, I don't want to do anything. You got to do stuff you want to do. Somebody, somebody asked me the other day if I, if I ever felt a tiny feeling that I should not be doing so much when I'm working hard. I do have that feeling when I'm doing something like pulling or when I'm lifting something that's too big, but not in general. I never have the feeling that I shouldn't be doing all this work. I just, I just work to my capacity, right? I just do what I'm able to do. If I'm able to do it without pain, that's great. If I'm going to get some pain from it, how much pain can I tolerate? Do I have medication that's sufficient to get rid of the pain? If I have good enough medication, and you got to be careful, there's so many different types of medication now. And some of them are addicting, and some of them are they're bad for your liver or your kidneys or something. And some of them are whatever. I guess the addicting stuff, most of the pain medication that really works is addicting. I remember when I would use codeine, aspirin, uh, no, aspirin is called acetaminophen, no, acetosilic acid, so you, A-S-A. So in Canada, acetosilic acid is, is aspirin. So A-S-A is acetosilic acid, so that's aspirin. And aspirin will get rid of a fever and it will dilate your blood vessels make your blood runnier and but it will also but they they would add to it. you had 
one, twos, and threes. I think it was, and, and so there was codeine in it. And so you could get some that had codeine in it and it would really take away the pain. But you got so constipated, oh my gosh, it was horrible. And of course, codeine is addicting. And then after a little while, you'd start to feel depressed using it. So anyway, that, that was years ago when I was in my 20s. I hurt my back. I had, I had, my back was in bad shape. I guess when I was a teenager, we, the, the chiropractor and I figured that that's what I, how I must have hurt my back was back in 1967 when I was 12 years old. We took a cross-country trip to California from Georgia. And on the way, I, rep I was the one that was in charge of packing the car. I loved to organize those suitcases and get everything just in all the little holes. I just thought that was just the best. I still love packing things. I can really, I can see the shapes and what would fit there and how it would work. Anyway, a spatial, I have spatial, spatial abilities, something. Anyway, so to see that sort of stuff. I can always tell when I'm looking at a room and I'm looking at an item, I know if that item will fit or not or any item, when, when I'm, I'm comparing two items or I'm comparing a slot to an item, I can see which will fit and which won't fit and how they will fit together. Isn't that neat? That's just me. I can't do much with, uh, I have an auditory cognitive problem. So if it comes in my ears, and then I say it inside, and then I try and write it, it won't come out right, or I'll forget it. There's, some, there's something wrong. When I see the words, I have to say them. So I have to translate things from my eyes to my ears, and then I have to picture them, and then I get it. But if I don't do all those steps, you know, see it, like written word, and, and say it in my head, but when I go to write it down, like if I'm writing a phone number down, I always get them wrong. And I try so hard to listen to what I'm saying when I'm reading it aloud. I can read it, no problem. But I can't put it back out. Anyway, that's very tricky when I have this. We use a, a, an intermediary when we make phone calls, long distance phone calls, we have to phone this other number. Well, I know that number. That's easy. I've been using it for so many years. So... I dial that number, but by the time I'm finished with that number, I can't remember the number for, before. You know, the number, the phone number I have to dial now. I can't remember it. I can't, and I can't look at it because on your phone, it'll only show you what you're doing. It won't show you your numbers on your contacts. At the same, you have to go over there. Anyway. This is a very pretty fire. Well, I guess I better go because this video will be too long. But it has been very nice. Oops. It has been very nice talking to you. So, bye bye. Oh, did you see the, the trees up here? The trees are all turning. I don't know if you can see anything there. You see, some of them across here are turning, but those are not. There's a maple back there. It's turning orange. But but the hill back here is the best. You can see the hill all the way from the road as you're driving down the hill. Oh, you can't see it. It's too it's too bright and the alders are too tall. Anyway, but there's trees all the way around in a in a ring. Go right around. There's one tree you might be able to see. But the rest of them are hidden. Okay, so I'll talk to you later. Bye. You can do this home at home. Results may differ.